Well, time to pull out the TIG side of things for this multi-process welder. Uh, I want to make something clear up front that I am not a TIG welder. So keep that in mind as I'm going through. By all means, if I say something wrong, let me know in the comments. So the purpose of this video then is to show you mostly what you get with the TIG setup and to kind of help me out as well. Uh, hopefully me as a newbie can share something that uh, maybe one of you guys don't know if you're wanting to start out. So let's get into it. Some of the things you do get with the TIG setup is you, you get this TIG torch um, and it's a WP dash 17 V so from what I can tell the 17 is a pretty common size torch and the V means that your valve is uh, right there on the torch so that means that there's no foot pedal or no high frequency start it's a it's a scratch start um, setup uh, other things you get you, um, you get a couple different cup sizes call it call it body and your back caps Side note, they don't tell you any of these sizes um, for your collets. So, for example, they give you a 1, a 1 1.6, and a 2.0. Uh, obviously, that's millimeters. And so, you can do the conversion. I think when I looked it up, the 2.0 was roughly a uh, 0.07 inch. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, uh, for some of the things you don't get, like your tungsten, um, my first mistake was I went out and bought what I thought to be a pretty common sized tungsten, which is 330 seconds. Turns out that 330 seconds is actually roughly 0.09 inch. And the, if you remember a second ago, the largest size was a 2.0. So. So if you buy some tungsten, uh, make sure it's either uh, smaller than 332nd or you uh, are going to need something else that doesn't come with the kit. So I went on to Amazon and I just got this little kit. Um, it's just a little accessory kit. What it included was some uh, some more of a variety of sizes for cups, and it happened to have a three thirty second collet. So I was in luck to use the the tungsten that I'd bought. Just to be clear, you get that stuff, uh, excluding my argon bottle. You don't get any of this stuff. So right out of the box, you're going to have to buy some extra goodies. Um, that also includes this uh, filler rod, which didn't come in this little kit, and, you know, some tungsten. Um, there actually was like one or two pieces of tungsten in this little kit that I got. I didn't end up using it because, well, I'd already gone out and made the mistake of buying this kind. Now that I'm regretting it. So I went out and got some uh, E3 tungsten. If you can see the color on that, it's a purple. And the E3 means it's got some three metals in it. Uh, it's non-radioactive. I guess that was a thing a little while ago about uh, some radioactive tungsten. Anyway, this is non-radioactive. Woohoo! Good. So to start off TIG welding with the multiprocessor, you're going to need to get three more things. A bottle of argon, some tungsten, and filler rod. And I would suggest getting a little kit as this. A little kit like this as well so I am going to actually set it up right now with this little stubby kit um, they call it a stubby kit because everything's slightly shorter smaller than what you get makes sense right so it's pretty simple oh side note supposedly this little collet body is a little better uh, because it's got a mesh um, outlet for the gas Whereas if you look at uh, these guys, it's just got uh, some holes. So the mesh kind of dispenses the gas a little better. So simply kind of 
So you simply screw that guy in. And grab your tungsten. I'm gonna grab the 332nd, call it. Oh, let's go the other way. And that's what cinches down on the tungsten as you screw in your back cap. Since I have the longer tungsten, I obviously need a larger back cap. So something else I've kind of picked up on or learned is is you roughly want the length of that stick out to be about the diameter of your cup, give or take. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. So that's what you get with the uh, with the kit. Next, I'm going to hook up my argon bottle and then sharpen my tungsten, and we'll be ready to weld. So with TIG welding, you need 100% argon. There's a couple good videos out there showing why you can't use your C25 mix, which is 75% argon. And of course, I had the exact same question of, well, hey, it's 75% argon. Why can't you use that? Long story short, 100% argon. There, and just like that, the argon's hooked up. So if I open it up, get to about 15 to 20, and if I open up the valve, you should hear some gas coming out. Perfect. There's many ways to skin a cat here. Uh, one of the qu quickest and easiest ways I saw to sharpen the tungsten was to just chuck it up and then if you've got a wheel grinder, easily just grind it to a point. Simple as that. Handy dandy setup guide. Tick torch goes to negative. Ground to positive. As I'm going along here, I just want to point out a couple things that I don't think I mentioned earlier. The filler rod that I'm using here is 16th inch uh, ER70S. It's a very common uh, filler rod for steel. I did pick up a 332nd as well, but that seemed a little too big, um, and this 16th inch works great. Another side note, the uh, there are no suggested amp settings for the TIG. Um, so, you know, it's all, you're kind of playing it by ear and touch to see, you know, if you're going too fast or too slow. Uh, another thing, uh, I don't think I mentioned, this is a scratch start. So there's no foot pedal or anything. You actually have to go as if you were, you know, welding a type of um, stick welding where you actually touch the metal and then come back up. The only other thing I want to mention is you'll want a good uh, regulator. I, I added this video because you can kind of tell those sparks um, flying out. From what I can tell is that is because the flow rate changed mid-weld and I mean it just went up high so it was throwing stuff everywhere. Uh, you'll see that here shortly at the very last weld I did. Alright guys, well I'm pretty stoked about this little guy. Don't take my welds for uh, how good it does weld. Because like I said in the beginning, this these are some of my very first TIG welds. I figured out here at the very end um, that the cheap regulator that it does come with 
it didn't keep a steady flow rate of argon and it, it had bumped up quite a bit and so I'm pretty sure that's what that problem was. Let me know if I'm wrong or if there was something else there that uh, made the, all those little pockets. So then I flipped it around just to, just to test out some more and I didn't notice that high um, flow rate until after these two guys as well and, and started figuring out that something was off. But heck, by the, uh, by the very end, I was starting to actually throw down something that resembles a weld. So, like I said, I'm excited about this guy, and uh, hopefully this helps. So, now I'm going to uh, switch over to the stick, uh, just in case anyone cares. I don't know if anyone does. If not, heck, uh, you can end the video now. Well, can you tell? I'm not a stick welder. But hey, this was really just to prove the function that uh, it can weld. I'm not sure if you could tell in the video, but uh, the first uh, test I was doing was with 16th inch diameter rod and bumped it up the amperage a little bit, and that's because then for the second row I, I had uh, some thicker, um, I think it was 332nd. So, anyway, just a quick little video showing that yes, uh, it can stick weld and if you really want it for that process. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, see you next time.